Hey everyone, Emma here, also known as 8 Fun Hello, bringing all of you another video. Today's video is going to be my response to the Female Artist Spotlight. This was a thread that was originally created by Ed over at On My Turntable, and I'm going to link him down below. But it's definitely been making its rounds in the vinyl community over the last month, month and a half or so. And I just have to say, before I get into this, I have thoroughly enjoyed watching the responses to this thread. A lot of members of the vinyl community have jumped in on this already, and I know that I'm a little bit behind, but from what I've seen over the last month, I feel like I have learned so much about incredible female artists and musicians that I would have not otherwise been exposed to without this thread. So I am a huge fan of this thread and the vinyl community kind of taking this on and I definitely kind of wanted to jump in on this as well and share my response and recommendations with all of you. I try to be with my picks. I chose five female artists, incredible women in music, and I try to be as diverse as I possibly could be in terms of decades, in terms of backgrounds, in genres. So hopefully my hope is that you are able to take away at least a, a female artist that you're interested in, if not more, uh, from my response. And if anything, just learn about new artists, incredible women in music that deserve a spotlight. So this is my response to the female artist spotlight. The first female artist that I want to highlight in today's video is an individual named Amethyst Kia. Now, Amethyst Kia is an acclaimed singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist that has really been making waves in modern music, specifically roots music and Americana. She has this unique ability to kind of blend folk, blues, again, this kind of Americana, and put it all together and throw in her own modern twist. So that's what I really appreciate about her. She's from Chattanooga, Tennessee, and uh, this album that I'm holding up is her uh, solo debut album from 2021 called Wary and Strange, and I highly recommend checking out this album if you have not already. I know that this was a pretty big album when this came out a couple of years ago, so you may or may not be familiar with it, but if you aren't by any chance, please check this out. Um, this, is, this is the number one recommendation that I have for you from her. She also has done some side projects that I'll talk about here in a second, but this is definitely the big one for me. In fact, this was one of my favorite albums of 2021. Um, but one of the major reasons why I love Amethyst Kia is her voice. Her vocal range is incredible and she has this ability to, she can go from being hauntingly delicate with her voice to being very like robust and commanding uh, in a sense. And the other thing that I appreciate about Amethyst is her songwriting. It's extremely and deeply introspective. She explores themes in her music like identity, like loss and resilience. And um, she makes it very relatable for people to listen to. And of course, just the music in and of itself is a great listen. So I highly recommend Wary and Strange and checking out Amethyst Kia if you aren't familiar. But another thing that I want to note with her is that she was part of, or still is, I think, um, this side project, this supergroup, which is perfect for this discussion about female artists. This is an all-female supergroup in collaboration uh, called Our Native Daughters. And this album is called Songs of Our Native Daughters, which came out in 2019. This album, and here's Amethyst Kia right here, this album explores the unfortunate horrors of our country's history in terms of the treatment of not only Black individuals in our country, but specifically Black women. Uh, it touches on slavery and racism and the hard history that we have to talk about and recognize and acknowledge. And this is a very important album to listen to. So I highly recommend checking this out again, Songs 
uh, of our native daughters from our native daughters uh, put out by the National Museum of African American History and Culture. This is worth the listen for sure. It's very reflective, um, but it also too incorporates a message of hope and empowerment for the future. So Amethyst Kia, if you're not familiar with her, please go check her out. Um, she is definitely worth it. The next artist that I want to talk about is she is right here. This is an individual named Kelly Stewart. Now Kelly Stewart is from Rockford, Illinois. So an Illinois girl, you guys know how I love that. And I would consider her to be part of the country, like neo-traditional country scene with aspects of Americana to that, but definitely, especially like her solo album, which unfortunately I do not have, but I will post a picture of it up here. Um, she would be considered, I would say, neo-traditional country uh, in a sense. So she she's able to blend elements of traditional country with modern influences as well. This is uh, the album that I'm showing. This is called Weep and Willow. And this is actually a collaboration with this guy right here. This is actually her husband named Miles Nielsen. And there is a cheap trick connection here, but that's not what we're talking about. I wanna talk about specifically Kelly Stewart. She does, she, she currently tours with a band called The Restless Kind. Uh, they do a very, very nice job. And again, they have released a solo album, which if you are a fan of modern country music, I think that you would uh, very much enjoy that. But her voice is incredible. I love Kelly so much. And not only is her voice great, she is such a kind-hearted individual. I've actually had um, the privilege to have met her a handful of times through various different events, whether it uh, was events with Miles, or she also sings as part of the Nielsen Trust, which is Rick Nielsen of Cheap Tricks Family Band. And uh, it, real quickly on that, she does vocals on Tonight It's You by Cheap Trick when she plays with that band. And listen, I love Robin Zander so much. I love that song so much. But when she does that, that is her song because um, she just absolutely nails it every time. That is the highlight of those shows for me, hearing Kelly sing Tonight It's You uh, by Cheap Trick. Just absolutely incredible. But she has these hints um, in her in her solo career. She has these hints of Americana and country and blues rock kind of all blended together. Wonderful vocals. She's just overall an extremely talented musician um, in her own right. And she writes very heartfelt lyrics that are very relatable, which I appreciate. And in terms of her vocals, I would say she kind of gives off like this Carol King vibe. Every time I listen to her, I get this Carol King vibe to it. So I don't know exactly what it is, but if you go check her out, let me know if you get that as well. But uh, the second artist for this female artist spotlight, Kelly Stewart. She is great. The next artist that I want to talk about is this girl right here. This is Ruby Starr. Now, the album that I'm holding up, this is from 1971 from a band called Ruby Jones, and this is their uh, self-titled debut album and the only album that this band put out. Quick little backstory about Ruby Starr. Ruby Starr is originally from, I believe, Toledo, Ohio. And while she was growing up, she was part of various bands around the Midwest. And the story goes that I think in 1969, she joined a band that ended up calling themselves Ruby Starr. Uh, did some tour, it toured around the Midwest and such. And in 1971, the band was signed to the Kurtome record label, which was Curtis Mayfield's label. And in that same year, they released this solo debut album. And of course, the only album that they put out. Um, this is so funky, so, so full. And why I love this album, why I wanted to showcase this with Ruby Starr is because I think that her vocals just shines on this more than work with either her solo career or Black Oak, Arkansas, which I'll get into here in a second. But her vo 
and her vocals and her voice shines on this album. She has this Janis Joplin vibe to her. Um, so if you go sample this, immediately you will get this Janis Joplin vibe. Um, I would kind of consider her in the vein of uh, Southern slash blues rock, but especially this album. This album is very funky, very soulful, and uh, definitely worth checking out if you are not familiar. So they released this album in 1971, and of course they play a bunch of different bars and local clubs and things like that. And supposedly Jim Dandy of Black Oak, Arkansas, and that's that may be where you've heard this name before, um, ended up saying, hey, come join our band. <laughs> so unfortunately she leaves Ruby Jones, but uh, it was great for her career because she joins Black Oak, Arkansas, and performs with them and obviously gains some notoriety that way and uh, she performed on a handful of their albums and provides vocals and that's where I would say that's where she um, she uh, kind of gained success in the music scene. Um, after she left Black Oak, Arkansas, she kind of just did her own thing. I think did some solo records. I'm not really familiar with those as much. And then I think in, uh, unfortunately, sometime in the 90s, she passed away from cancer. So this is definitely one of those names, especially when, if you listen to her voice, it's hard to believe that she kind of fell under the radar uh, in the music scene. If I say Ruby Star, you know, do, do a lot of you know her? Maybe some of you, but I'm sure some of you don't. Um, so I definitely wanted to talk about her. Again, kind of showcasing this diversity in genres, right? We, we kind of went to uh, the modern music scene and, and country and roots and Americana. And now we're moving over to Southern blues rock, funk, soul, the 70s. Um, so hopefully you are enjoying this as much as I am. But again, a very underrated vocalist and woman in music, Ruby Starr, definitely worth checking out. The next artist that I wanna highlight is part of this band. This is the band The Beths, and this is their uh, album Expert in a Dying Field, which I will get into here in a second. But the musician that I'm gonna be talking about is the lead singer and primary songwriter of this band, and her name is Liz Stokes. That is a name that I hope you all remember and take with you after this video if you are not familiar with her at all. Now, the Beths in general, they're kind of this indie pop slash power pop band out of New Zealand, a group of friends, high school friends, college friends that banded together and created this band. Uh, again, kind of in the indie pop power pop vein. Uh, Liz is the front woman of the Beths and uh, her sound, like her, her voice is incredible. She very much gives the Beths their distinct sound, especially through her voice. But the primary reason why I want to talk about Liz Stokes is her songwriting. In my opinion, seriously, in my opinion, she is hands down one of the best modern pop songwriters out there. One of the best, top five, if not top three. Her songwriting is unbelievable. Um, her vocals are very vibrant, they add depth to the songs, but her songwriting ability, she's just so unbelievably talented. You can tell that she just has the ear for it um, and, and there's something very unique there. She is a master songwriter in the pop sphere. Uh, but this album came out in 2022, so if you aren't familiar with this, I definitely highly recommend checking this out. It has very, uh, I'm looking at some of the songs here, it has very catchy riffs, has those perfect melodies and harmonies that you want out of perfect pop music. Um, this is a great album, but again, Liz Stokes, know the name. Uh, go look up some of her lyrics. She is just great. So Liz Stokes of the Beths is, comes in at number four for this spotlight. The last album that I wanna talk about in women in music. Uh, this is pretty fitting. This is a compilation. Now we are going to move away from pop country and uh, Americana, Southern blues uh, area, and we're going to move into rock. So this is for my rock people out there. 
The compilation that I want to show to kind of end this female spotlight is called Tigress. This is the Women Who Rock compilation. This was put out by Jim Peterick in World Stage. And quick little backstory, I won't get too into it, but Jim Peterick is known for uh, Survivor fame. He is the primary songwriter of I the Tiger, uh, has written so many classic songs that all of you have heard of before. He was part of the band The Ides of March out of the Chicagoland area uh, and is one of my favorite musicians and just people in general. Well, he has this group called World Stage and they do a show once a year, but it's also, I think, uh, it's turned into kind of a recording situation as well. And they put out this compilation again called Tigress, featuring many different, I think specifically two local um, acts and women in music, specifically the rock scene, and put them on this album. Basically, the reason why this album was put out, and this is again fits perfectly in with the spotlight, Jim Peterick wanted to showcase women in music who he admires and who he thinks deserves a spotlight. So this is great. Um, but there's a lot of great artists on here and I am going to put in the description below some of the names so you can definitely go check them out. But again, if you are a huge rock fan, check out this album, great compilation of women who rock. The number one woman that I want to highlight from this compilation has been involved in various different musical projects over the last handful of years. She is the current lead vocalist of Jefferson Starship and has been since I believe 2008, 2009, and that is Kathy Richardson. Kathy Richardson is one of my favorite vocalists of all time and probably my favorite female vocalist ever. Um, I have such a soft spot for Kathy Richardson. I have seen her live a couple of times, part of Jim Peterick World Stage and their yearly show that they do. But I remember specifically, this has to be, I was probably 11 or 12 years old and I went to go see the World Stage and it was one of my first times seeing that show. I went with my dad and we were there and it's a long show, it's like a three hour show. So we were there and about halfway through they were playing some slow songs and it was fine and I'm young and I'm kind of dozing off a little bit. And then they bring out Kathy Richardson and I didn't know of her, I didn't hear, I've never heard of really Jefferson Starship before outside of a few songs and so on. And they brought her out and I remember like the crowd was half asleep, people were old right? But the crowd was half asleep, I was half asleep and she comes out and she sings don't you want somebody? Don't you want some? And she, it like just totally changed the atmosphere and totally changed the vibe of that entire show. Everybody was on their feet. Everybody was dancing and having a great time. And that was such a pivotal moment for me, just like in music, because I was like, whoa. Like I remember leaving that show still to this day. My dad and I talk about Kathy Richardson's performance that night still to this day. Um, it is a memory that is just locked in my head. And so I definitely wanted to take time to talk about her, but then also other incredible women in rock music. I guarantee you do not know most, if not all of these names. Again, I'll, I'll put them in the description, but this is a great compilation. Definitely check this out. That's all for this video, everybody. Again, let me know down in the comments below if you have heard of any of these artists before, if you want to check out some of these artists or albums. I always love talking music with all of you. Hopefully you were able to take away at least someone or something of interest. Again, I try to be as diverse as possible, different backgrounds, different decades, different genres. There's something for everyone in here. So hopefully you take some time to check out these incredible women that deserve some spotlight. But with that, that is all for this video. I hope that all of you are doing well and I will see you all for my next video. Bye guys.